Hello and welcome back. This is Jonathan Garner covering the theory of Python. And this is another Python tutorial. We're going to talk about the if statement today. So in review, we've already learned about some literals, the decimals, the, the floats, the complex uh, numbers. We've learned about variables. We've learned about some functions. Uh, we have a very simple understanding of functions. We don't have the full definition of the function yet. And in this, this lecture, I'm going to cover very broadly what flow control is, why it's important, and especially why we need branching with the if statement. Okay, so if you did the watch the last video, which was about uh, de decorators, there was a homework assignment I gave you to write the cache decorator. And you probably noticed that if you didn't use something like the if statement, that this assignment was impossible, right? So if you struggled with that, and I hope you did, then you can start to realize now more than ever how important the if statement is. Now, if you have a solution to that that doesn't involve the if statement, I would love to see it and see what you came up with because that would be pretty cool. Okay, so if you do have a solution that you came up with for that homework assignment that didn't involve an if statement, I would love to see it. Please share it with me. I think that will be great. Okay, so uh, branching. Why do we need branching? Well, as you saw with the cache, uh, the cache function, you need to have the code behave differently based on what the data is telling you. So we've already talked about using code to shape memory, right? We've looked at variables, we've looked at literals, we've looked at using operators, and we've looked at storing those values in memory. So we're using code to modify memory. But can we use the values that are in memory to influence what code is actually run? The answer is yes. And this is where we're gonna cover about flow control and how this stuff works, okay? So there are two styles of programming out there. One is called imperative and the other is called declarative. Imperative programming is pretty common. This is what Python does, uh, Java, C++, all these languages, C, C++. Declarative is pretty rare. There's only a few languages that are known very well that do this. One is SQL and the other is Prolog. And there are a few others out there. The difference between imperative and declarative programming is in declarative programming, you tell the computer what it is you're looking for. You give it a set of rules, you give it kind of a set of parameters for the program that you want to run. And then the computer figures out how to actually run that program. And in the case of SQL, there's all kinds of optimizations that enter into figuring out what the best code to run is to get you the results that you're looking for. However, in imperative, program, imperative programming, what you're doing is telling the, pro the computer each step of the way what to do. Say do this and then do this and then do that, okay? And so flow control is super important for imperative languages because you need to control what's supposed to happen next, okay? So let's look at broadly some concepts that come from control flow or flow control. So we first have the basic uh, control flow, which is always do the next statement. We've already looked at this. We've been doing it this way. Uh, if you go back to the lecture on what computers are and how they work, I'm sorry, I hit the microphone stand there. If you go back to the lecture on what computers are and how they work, um, there's like the PC, the program counter that points to the next location in memory with the code to run. Uh, but there are going to be exceptions to that, and we're going to talk about them very quickly. One of them we've already covered, which is basically functions. Uh, these are known as subroutines depending on the language, how they treat them. In Python, they're called functions because they always return a value, even if that value is none. And what happens with functions is you suspend execution, you go do some other code for a while, and then you come back with a value, okay? And so we've looked at functions, they're pretty useful. Something that we haven't really covered, what we've been doing is in the interpreter, you can type the exit command, okay? When you're hitting Control Z Enter in Windows or Control D, that's leaving the, inter the interactive mode and you're basically telling the program to stop. And so there's a, a command to actually tell the program to stop. Now, if you wanna actually include this command in your code, you need to do something like this. You need to do import sys and then you do sys.exit. And you can put a uh, status code in there uh, zero would mean that the program terminated successfully. Anything else would mean some kind of error, and it's meaningful in the Unix context. Okay, but we're not going to cover that here. That's basically one way to control flow, just to say stop flowing. Um, and this is somewhat comparable to the return statement 
in your functions if you think of functions as miniature programs, which they kind of sort of are, okay? Another way to control flow is we can do branching. And in Python, that means the if statement, uh, which includes elif and else. It includes the conditional a, if, b, else, c. And it includes also or and and operators. We're going to talk about how the or and and operators are actually doing branching through something called short circuiting. So short circuiting. Okay. We can do branching. There's looping, right? Looping says run this code over and over again. And this comes in a variety of flavors. One is the while loop, which we're going to cover as soon as I can. While is extremely important. It, every program has at its heart a while loop of some sort. And we can also do for. Now, Python's for can only iterate across sequences. It doesn't include the kind of for statement you might see in other languages where it counts up to a number or where there's like some kind of conditional, like keep iterating in this loop until this condition is met. Then we also have a try. We have, I, I might call these, let's just call these other or miscellaneous, right? We have the try except exception handling. So if there's an exception raised, run this special bit of code. We also have the with statement, which we haven't really even looked at yet. I've talked about it several times. It's going to be useful. We're going to use it in certain contexts. The with statement runs some special code before a block of code is run and some special code after the block of code is run. And some things that aren't in Python that you might see in other languages, the switch statement. There's a really good way to simulate this more or less in Python. And there's also go to, which isn't present in Python at all. You actually don't need go to if we have uh, if and while and other things like that. And there are some other things that are missing from Python as well, but you won't really find them missing. It's not really that big of a deal. Okay. So let's talk about branching. When do we branch? How do we know when to branch in the code? How does the code know when to branch? How do you tell the program when to branch? This gets down to something called truth, right? And truth is really Boolean algebra. In Boolean algebra, there's two numbers, zero and one. In Python, we call zero false, and we call one true, okay? You've already seen these, hopefully. And so we need to make a decision when we branch. Do we branch or do we not branch? And the truth value of the conditional on the branch will tell you whether or not to branch. There's no maybes here. It's an absolute yes or no question that we need to answer. Okay, don't confuse. Boolean is not the same as binary. Okay, binary is a notation system for numbers, integers and stuff. Boolean is not. It's a completely different algebra where there's only two numbers. There is no two, there is no three in Boolean. Uh, there's no zero, zero, one, one, zero, nothing like that, okay? So the way we write branching in Python, there's actually three ways to do this, but the way that I'm gonna encourage you to do this is we're gonna use the if statement. And what the if statement is, you start with the word if, if, and if is a keyword, so you can't have any variables called if. I hope you haven't tried that yet, but if you do, it'll tell you you can't do that. And then you put some kind of conditional expression, okay? And after the conditional expression, you put a colon. This probably, this colon looks familiar from the uh, def definition of a function, right? And following that colon, just like for a function, you can have a suite. And either you can have statements that follow that line, so you have a one-liner, you can separate it by semicolons, or you indent four spaces, and then you have statements that are stacked on top of each other. They're indented like this, okay? And so this block of code, this is called the suite, okay? It's a set of statements that are run, okay? Now, if we had some code over here, so let's say if, and we have some condition C, and then we have a set of statements A, and then after that if, so we go, if we indented to get the statements A, then we, we de-dent back to the same indention, indentation as the F, as the if statement. Then we have these statements B. Okay, so if C is true, if C is true, then what it's going to do is it's going to do A, okay? But if C is false, it's going to do B. Well, I kind of lied to you a little bit. If C is true, then it's going to do A, and then it's going to continue with B, and then it's going to continue. If C is false, then it skips A and just does B. This is somewhat confusing, I think, for people when they're first programming. Is there, I guess they're kind of surprised that 
uh, A isn't run or they're surprised when B is run. Anyway, it's something to think about for a while. Okay, now the full if statement, you can also have L if conditions, as many as you want, and you have a suite of code under that. And then you can have a final else block, okay? And you can have as many of these as you want, okay? This can be zero or many. And this one, you can only have zero or one of them. You can only have one else block if you're gonna have an else block at all, okay? And what Python's doing is it first checks the if condition. If this is true, then it runs the suite, and then it goes to the bottom of the if statement, right? It skips elif and else and everything and continues. If the condition is false, then it looks at the next elif and it tests that condition. If that is true, it runs that block of code and then it goes to the bottom and continues past the else statement, okay? If all of these conditions are false, it checks them one at a time, if all of them are false, then it will run the else block, okay? And the else block is run and then it continues with the following statements, okay? So to kind of draw that out, let's say we had this simple code, if A, then we run capital A, L if B, then we run capital B, L if C, then we run capital C, and then let's do else D, and then finally we have E following this whole if block. So it's going to do this. It's gonna say, is A true? Okay, if it is, then do A, and then go down to E. So I'm gonna represent that down to here as E, okay? Then it's gonna check if A is false, then it's gonna check B. If B is true, then it's gonna run block B, and then it's gonna go down to E, okay? If B is false, however, it's gonna check C. If C is true, it's gonna run the block C and then continue with block E. And then if C is false, then I will run the block E, the else block, and then continue with, I'm sorry, the D block for else, and then it will continue with E. So this is kind of sort of what's happening in Python. So it's, it has this kind of this waterfall cascade effect. So do the A block if A is true. If A block isn't true, if A isn't true, then do the B block if B is true. If B isn't true, then do the C block if C is true. If C isn't true, then do the else block. And no matter what you do, you always continue with the next statement following the else block. So following the else, following the if statement, okay? And again, you don't need elif blocks, you don't need else blocks, they could be useful. All right. Um, what is true in Python? Well, in order to understand truth, let's first look at what's false. So in Python, things that are false includes none, all the zeros. This would be integer zeros, float zeros, uh, even complex zeros. Okay, these are all zeros. Also empty sequences. We haven't really covered sequences yet, but when we do, I'll talk more about this. And what is true is pretty much everything else. Okay, and if you're not sure about whether a value is true or false, you can open up your interactive mode and use the bool function, and this will tell you true or false. Okay, all right. Uh, now we could use zeros to write our if statements. Um, we could even use it to do like subtraction or addition to see if a value is equal to something, but we have in Python a bunch of comparators. And the comparators are as follows. We have less than, so we have A less than B, A is less than equals to B, A is equals to B, note that there's two equal signs, not one. A is not equal to B, A is greater than or equal to B, and then finally A is greater than B, okay? And this works pretty much the way you expect. There's a couple of notes here. Uh, one is that you can change. So you can do A is less than B is less than C. Okay, so you have three expressions separated by the less than symbols. And what Python's gonna do, it's gonna evaluate A, and then it's gonna see that, and then it's gonna evaluate B in the compare. Okay, and if A is indeed less than B, then it's going to evaluate C and see if B is less than C. And you can chain these as long as you want. You can even do silly things like this. Um, which says that B is both greater than A and greater than C, which is kind of weird, um, but you can do all that. If, if Python has a hard time figuring out how to compare stuff, it will give you a type error. Note that complex numbers, uh, you can do equals with them, but you can't see which one is bigger than the other. It doesn't like test to see if they have different magnitudes or anything like that. And uh, note also 
that according to Python's rules, true is equal to the integer 1 and false is also equal to the integer 0. Okay, you can actually do true times 2 and it'll give you 2, which is kind of an artifact back in the day. There's two other ones that we can use for comparators. It's called is and is not. So you say A is B and A is not B. And what this does is it's checking the ID. So basically it says ID of A is the same as the ID for B. And this one would be ID of A is not equal to the ID of B. Okay, and this is useful if you want to see if uh, two different expressions give you the exact same thing. Okay, typically if you want to see something is something. All right, um, moving along. Let's talk a little bit about um, the trinary conditional. Trinary conditional looks like this. So you have some expression A, if, and then we have a conditional in the middle, else B. Okay, so this is a trinary conditional. And what this does is it evaluates the conditional. If the conditional is true, then it returns A, basically, for this expression. If it's false, then it returns B. This is relatively useful for templates and things like that. I really don't use that very much, um, unless the expressions are very, very simple. Uh, so typically, I avoid this. Um, it also, when you're running a code analysis tool, a code coverage tool that runs your unit tests and see which code is run, typically they, they struggle with this because it can't tell if you ran both the conditional is true and both the conditional is false. Okay, And that's all there is there for that. I want to talk about the if. Next lecture, I'm going to go deeper into the Boolean operators and Boolean math. I hope you guys have a great day. Take care and bye-bye. This video is part of a series on the theory of Python. You can click on the left to see the playlist and on the right to support my channel. Thank you very much for your time.